This is Ashley Eckstein, Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan V. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. I am your host, Dan Zare, and I am delighted to talk Star Wars with you. Since May 2013, I've been committed to creating a positive, family-friendly, spoiler-free place for our Star Wars community. Imagine... Walking into your favorite coffee shop and joining a lively discussion about Star Wars films, Disney Plus live action, animation, books, comics, collectibles, or Star Wars experiences at the Disney theme parks. I want to bring that sense of community to this podcast, my website, special events, live video experiences, email newsletter, and more. Join our Star Wars community at coffeewithkenobi.com and be part of something special. Be sure to book your trip with me On the Disney Wish next summer, June 16th to the 20th, 2025, the Disney Wish has several Star Wars specialty options not available on any other cruise line on the planet, including the Hyperspace Lounge and the Cargo Bay for Kids. It's an amazing thing. I really hope you can join us. Find out more at coffeewithkenobi.com slash Disney Wish. On today's bonus show for the week, Michael Kogi joins me. Michael Kogi, a great Star Wars author and friend of the show, just a great guy, an amazing author. He is the showrunner slash writer of a new audio drama series, John Carter of Mars, the audio series, which stars none other than young indie himself, Sean Patrick Flannery. So find out about this Kickstarter, and you're running out of time, so be sure to check this out and support this incredible endeavor. So pull up a chair, grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. Returning for a cup of coffee. My goodness, it's been far too long, but we have kept a place for him at the Coffee with Kenobi table. Michael Kogi, a great author, great guy. Welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you, Dan. It's I know it's been, what, almost 10 years? Yes. Uh, wow. Wow. Since The Force Awakens, I think, right? You're correct. Yeah, that was and that was for the you did the junior novelization for that. I did, uh, and that was the impetus for that conversation. But I but I've always appreciated and admired your work, so it's it's just a, a delight to have you back on the show. Well, well, th- well, thank you so much, Dan, for having me. And uh, yeah, it's, this is a great show, and I, I've I've seen it. I uh, listened in uh, occasionally, and I've I've definitely seen it grow i mean it's you you can't you can't leave it now you know <laughs> that's right. i'm stuck everyone is stuck with me uh, yeah. and, and and i and i'm grateful for this wonderful community and you have you've been uh, uh, a wonderful ambassador for so many uh, intellectual properties but uh your writing and your creativity your passion shines through um i want to talk about john carter of mars uh oh, definitely brilliant. but before we get to that it just uh, how is the how have things changed for you since you did um, the junior novelization of The Force Awakens, and, and what have your kind of your impressions been of Star Wars since then? Um, so I did the uh, Force Awakens. And I got to do the entire trilogy of yes. uh, yeah, junior slash young adult. They kind of middle grade. They kind of fit within that whole uh, milieu of, of of fiction. But uh, I got to do the entire trilogy, and and. That was that was really special. Um, I got to kill off all my heroes. I'm, I'm the only person I think I can say I the only writer who did that. And you're still smiling. Uh, yeah. Well, it's yeah. So it was like having my childhood, and then yeah, I'm gonna want to ruin the sequel trilogy for everybody if they haven't seen it. But uh, one <laughs> by one, safe. they went down. You know, the uh, the big three. So uh, yeah, that was uh, that was it was a really special special time and, and, uh, working with Lucasfilm is always, always a lot of fun. It's, it's fantastic. It's, uh, you know, it's a significant part of, of my writing life. And, uh, I, you know, I, I, I love Star Wars so much. If you had asked me as the, you know, um, six, seven, eight year old kid who was playing with his action figures in the backyard mm-hmm. that, you would go on to write the Star Wars sequel trilogy. I loved so Star Wars so much back then. Uh, he would have said, "Oh yeah, I can see that." <laughs> so yes, uh, it's it's definitely been a uh, it, it was it was a dream fulfilled. Well, and and I wonder because of of course uh, we I love uh, your adaptations of those of the sequel trilogy. 
Which one was uh, the most challenging to write? They were all challenging in a way. Uh, everyone had its different different challenges. Uh, I thought The Force Awakens, the time I had, I had like two and a half weeks to write it. Oh, wow. Uh, and then I had to go to a wedding in the middle of it. So uh, it was that was tough. And then I uh, right after the day I closed, I finished on The Force Awakens. That night I started Batman versus Superman uh, Crossfire. Mm. Uh, so it was just like a complete shift. I remember that night suddenly writing Batman and Superman after I'd finished on the force awakens. So that was, that was, that was a, uh, a very, very productive and very busy time. Um, the, the last Jedi was, it's kind of, a, uh, kind of a revisionist take on star Wars in my view. So mm -hmm. trying to figure out Luke's journey and how he got to where he, he was, uh, that was a challenge for me um, that I, I really worked hard to, to meet. And, and, uh, and once I think I cracked that, I, the novel was a lot of, a lot of fun to write. I, I wrote a scene in there and every, in every of the junior novelization, there's a scene or there's a quite a bit of scenes, but maybe there's a special scene that I had tangentially to the movie. That's not in the movie. It's not in the screenplay, but I, I found a little, I find places to, to kind of explore and add my own voice and in uh, The Force Awakens, one of those places was Chewbacca's reaction after his buddy Han Solo is dead. In The Last Jedi, it's Luke saying goodbye to R2-D2 for the last time. Mm. And the, the relationship between the two of them. And I, I really found that kind of be a, a great scene to write. And then um, Rise of Skywalker, that was actually a a challenge because the I was working on the on this on the novelization as the the film was being edited and kind of re-edited and uh, you know things were being slotted in in different ways so uh, the schedule on that was was tough but there were a lot of moments I got to because the canvas of that story is so large uh, I was. I have a I have a scene in the beginning of the of the novel novel where Kylo Ren goes into Darth Vader's castle on Mustafar. It's not in the movie, um, but you know, in in this universe of the books, he he goes there. His I always saw his character as someone who is trying to connect with his grandfather, Darth Vader, and you know you see him in Force Awakens with Darth Vader's helmet. You see him with the, you know, kind of the ashes there and uh, you see him trying to be like his grandfather. And I actually have him trying to communicate with his grandfather, finding a way to see if he can conjure up those dark side ghosts of the past and talk to his grandfather. Of course, you know, there's there's really only silence, which is um, in a way profound for him too. the dark side is silence. Right because the dark side is just talking about the selfish needs of your own soul. So the only person you really do hear is yourself. Um, so I, I, I did like exploring that aspect of Kylo Ren quite a bit. Well, and, and I always tell my students, uh, if you really want to learn something or really get to understand someone, then you write, you write about them, you write from their perspective and undoubtedly those novels uh, enriched your appreciation and understanding of these characters. Absolutely. You know, um, and it's, I always think, you know, with, with something like a novelization, the I don't really get to make up the plot. You know, I can kind of have side, side stories and stuff, but the characters, they're mine, right? They're, their minds, their, their senses, everything that goes through them, is is me so i always say that ray and and uh, kylo ren uh and finn who i love you know i love finn and ray uh, those characters they're my characters you know and you have to own them i think if you're going to write write them well and at times they're different than the movie you know um uh, i i always like to think of like you know it's like a different actor takes up a role mm -hmm. and so you get a different to tonality or a different color uh for each 
each character and they and each each writer or each performer and they bring out something new that you might not have seen before so um at least for me i never want you know we have a movie i never want to just replicate what whatever's somebody else did you know that's for them i want to do what i what, what i can do the best i can and uh and that's by owning the characters and finding ways to speak through them. I love it. I've never really considered that. It's, it's, it's akin to a different actor, like whether it's a Michael Keaton Batman or the Christian Bale Batman, that there's still something that you can kind of add to that, to that overall spectrum, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I love the star Wars radio plays mm-hmm. and there's a different Darth Vader. It's Brock Peters. It's not, you know, James Earl Jones has passed away and he was a great Darth Vader for the films. Brock Peters is a great Darth Vader for the radio plays. And in many ways, he's slightly more, I wouldn't say human, but he has more emotional range in the radio plays. He gets angrier. And then there's this kind of like tragedy to him that you hear through his voice. Uh, And I just, when I think of that Darth Vader, I think of slightly a different picture uh, than just James Earl Jones, you know, and it, it was wonderful to hear a different take on Darth Vader with, with what Brock Peters did. Those, those are classics. Those are, those are absolute classics. I, I hopefully people listening uh, to the show, have gotten a chance. Uh, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube or things like that, but it, they're marvelous. They're marvelous. And there's, there's a, it almost like harkens back to the olden, not olden days. It seems like kind of a silly thing to say, but, but older classic entertainment. And that brings me uh, to John Carter of Mars, the audio series. But that's not all. Michael, That you've got some amazing things going on with this incredible Kickstarter. It's, it's a, a brand new audio series. It's got an incredible cast. I, you know, I'm going to let you take the reins on this. But please let us know, uh, I guess, before we talk about this audio series, Tell me, tell us about John Carter. Now, I will say, I know there's a Disney film. I actually legitimately love that film. I think it's great. I, I thought it, I I didn't know anything about that character. I knew about, of course, the uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs and things like that. Um, but talk to me about John Carter. Yeah, well, J- John Carter of Mars is is a uh, a science fiction series that was begun. Edgar Rice Burroughs is the writer of. The series. He's a creator of Tarzan and Pellucidar at, at the um, Earth's core, and uh, he he created this story in the in 1912 about a Civil War veteran who journeys to Mars, who gets astrally projected on Mars, and uh, on Mars he he kind of uh, encounters an entire civilization on the verge of collapse. Uh, with different warring species, the green Martians, the red Martians, uh, airships, uh, crumbling cities, atmospheric towers that are on the verge of falling apart in disrepair. And he has to find a way to save this planet and help, help the Martians save themselves. Uh, And I read those books maybe 14 years ago, I, 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 I'm stunned I didn't read them when I was younger, mm-hmm. but I opened them up. I remember I got this, I was at Barnes & Noble, and I saw this uh, Barnes & Noble classic, The Martian Tales Trilogy, and I opened it up, and I just bought it, and I started reading it, and I was just, I was struck by how incredible it was, how much wonder, the, the, I mean, the pages were bursting with wonder and ingenuity and, and just flash and pizzazz and i'm thinking this was this was written in 1912 he's talking about a civilization on mars and it's it's epic sword and sorcery fantasy um you know it has its root root in the pulps and there there are aspects episodic aspects of it but i i was the the overall effect of it was just i was stunned you know and i i was in English major in, in college, uh, English and film major. I, I love, you know, I love the classics. I love Dickens. And I love great writers uh, of today, modern modern literary writers. And 
old old classic writers um and yet here's a guy that i kind of uh, avoided because uh, you know i thought he was a pulp writer but boy he wrote something that is really really fresh at least to me and uh then the movie came out a little bit later i saw the film i loved the film i thought it was a really fun adaptation of it um and and it stayed with me. And I actually developed a relationship with the Edgar Rice Burroughs estate. And over time, we were talking about different projects. And I, I pitched them on, on this project. And I got a, a production company involved, Pocket Universe Productions. And from there, we, uh, we put together a package. Uh, we uh, would order a niche product. Well, you know, my pitch was we should do a audio series based on John Carter of Mars, kind of like the old Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or uh, radio play or the Star Wars radio dramas, because the scope of John Carter just seemed to fit this kind of uh, medium. And I, I had actually, I had spent a year in, in London working for the BBC radio drama department uh, among some other things. And I, I wanted to go back to that because it, it's, Radio drama, audio drama is such a fantastic medium. You can do so much with it, uh, and you can really – fantasy works so well in, in radio. Just listen to the Star Wars radio plays. They'll, they're, they're magnificent. So I, I pitched this audio series to uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, and, and they happily said, well, this is a great idea. We put together the elements, and we decided the Kickstarter was probably the best way to fund this. Because Kickstarters today are, it's not just about funding, but it's also about advertising, getting the word out. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, within the first 98 minutes, we, we met our initial funding goal. Of course, we have an internal budget, which is higher, which allows us to afford better cast and more name cast, more name talent, uh, and more sophisticated sound recording and editing and, and post-production um, kind of aspects to the to it so yeah we're now doing really well we have today is wednesday uh, september 11th uh 2024 and we have seven days left of of kickstarter so we're desperately trying to get as as much as we can in terms of pledges in order to help the production and kind of grow the cast even more we have a couple cast members we hope to announce tomorrow on thursday Oh, wow. uh, the 12th and then Friday. Um, and, but the cast today uh, for John Carter is, is our, our friend, Sean Patrick Flannery from the young Indiana Jones Chronicles, uh, a good friend of Lucasfilm and a, a marvelous actor. He's, he's, he's been fantastic. It's, it's a joy to work with, with Sean. He's also an executive producer on the series. We also have um, our friend, Tim Russ, who was on Star Trek Voyager. He is playing John Carter's alien friend slash comrade in battle, Tars Tarkas. Um, and Tim is just a, he's a fantastic voice actor. Uh, listening to his take on Tars Tarkas. I, I listened to it a couple, maybe a week ago. And I was, I was just amazed. We, we got the right actor. And then finally, we just announced yesterday, uh, Bruce Boxleitner, who Everybody knows he was the captain, the lead of Babylon 5. And he was, he was also Tron in Tron, uh, that, one of my favorite movies. Uh, and he was in um, a, a show that... Scarecrow and Mrs. King. Up. Scarecrow and Mrs. King. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, if you were around in the 80s, you remember that show or you, you've heard of it, right? So, oh, yeah. my mom I, loved it. Yeah. It all, <laughs> oh, yes, Absolutely. Yeah, I told I told Bruce. I said, "Hey, Bruce, my mom. Uh, I told her. You, uh, I told her we got the actor from Scarecrow, and Mrs. King, and she was like, oh, yeah, Bruce. Yeah, she remembered. It, so, <laughs> yeah, he laughed. He laughed. Uh, but yeah, uh, so it's it's a great cast, and and we have a couple more announcements to go. And so those those people that are interested in it want to support it or just want to check it out, uh, you can go to johncarterrises.com. It's johncarterrises.com, or you go to the Kickstarter page, type in John Carter Audio, you'll see John Carter, the audio series, and uh, you can see all the different 
rewards. As a writer, I've never had to deal with manufacturing of goods, um, <laughs> but you know, I'm also a producer on the show, so I'm looking at budget spreadsheets to make plush woolas. Woola is John Carter's kind of loyal frog dog companion on on Mars that he meets, and so we designed a plush woola. We're talking to a, a plush company and kind of doing the designs for it. It's, it takes quite a long time to do these things. We also have uh, a role-playing game supplement that is uh, an adventure where it's designed for the fifth edition of the world's most popular role-playing game. Also what they call old school review, review uh, rules. So if OSR, so if you're a, a player of uh, role-playing games from, you know, if you like play them in the early 80s or late 70s, this fits right in. And then there's also Pathfinder uh, 2.0 compatibility. Um, and then we also have, I always like this one, we have a copy of A Princess of Mars, both in English and in Martian. Wow. Uh, so, <laughs> so if you want a Martian copy of Princess of Mars, this is a place to get. I don't think you're ever going to get it again. Um, it, the, the I book have is so many Martian. questions. Yes. Oh my, I mean, <laughs> this is incredible. Like this is like, a love letter to all, because I'm guessing you and I are of, of a similar age. Uh, this is like a love letter to the things that we just absolutely adore growing up. And, and all of the things like, of course, RPGs or, or Dynamite, they, they've never been hotter than they have in the past decade or so. And then I actually, I use RPGs in my classroom for some different things. Uh, so you're getting not only, you have these options, not only getting this incredible audio drama, but then you've also got the role-playing games and it's, adaptable to different formats now did you write these as well uh i'm i'm the supervising editor on this um uh, thankfully uh we got a very experienced design team led by gilbert isla he did um weird frontiers for dungeon crawl classics he was the editor on that he's also done he has a lot of uh, role-playing game experience he just he did a play test of the game you can you can check it out on twitch if you go to the Kickstarter page, you can look in the updates and you'll find one to where you can watch the adventure being played. Uh, but yeah, it, it, he's, we also have Stephen Bean on that team, Jeff Mejia and Joan Troyer all working. They love John Carter and they all kind of broke a big adventure uh, together. And we, we are making a, like a, it's not a full role playing game. But it's you know it's a it's a supplement. So there's an adventure and there's some stats that you could potentially use in your in your D and D or five fifth edition game or your old school rules game or Pathfinder. So it's it's a lot of fun. There is an a, there are two other role playing games, uh, official role playing games of John Carter, one by Modiphius and then one that's coming out by Trollor Games. So we fit you know kind of in the middle, but um, you can also use the material from those games to kind of mash up things and, and and just have fun. So it is, it's a love letter to all that stuff, Dan, if mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're completely right. I, I haven't thought about that, but yeah, the whole thing is, it's very, I like to say it's very 1982, you know, or 1983. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, no, no complaints here. Uh, the bears were good then too. Hopefully the Chicago bears. Oh, right. Be good you won 85. They won the Super Bowl, right? So uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like the only time in my life. Uh, hopefully I won't say that in, in 10 years, but you'll be on many more times before then. Um, so when it comes to this story, uh, this audio drama, this, this isn't an audio drama of the three existing books. This is like, these are new adventures or is, am I correct? Um, so the audio drama is going to be an adaptation of A Princess of Mars. Okay. The, uh, the, the first book. Okay. And, uh, there's there's plenty of material there for a you know a, right now we're looking at a feature length audio drama so two hours maybe two hours and change uh, to uh, to tell the story uh, and you know if it's successful there might be an opportunity to do more you know that's what we hope but these things with the cast that we have and also manufacturing all the Kickstarter stuff it's mm. it, it's really it's really expensive you know it's oh, uh, I believe it yeah. It's there's not there's not a lot of wiggle room. The budget is very tight, so uh, it's all about you know budgeting and, and seeing what you can do and making the best thing you can. And the production alone, it, I can't. I, it must be astronomical. I mean, I know just what goes into something like creating just this podcast, and I'm not 
pumping in tons of sound effects and atmosphere and and getting these incredible talents to bring things to life. So that in and of itself is incredible because you're not only you not only wrote this, but you're executive producing, which me must be a whole different kind of a ball game for you. Yeah, I'm like show running it. So today we had auditions with an actress, uh, a great actress. Uh, I've been reaching out to you know agents doing the kind of showrunner thing you would do in television. Uh, also, uh, just finding ways. We have a we have a bunch of producers. Lance Roger Ax is a producer. Joseph Fronte is a producer. Jack Bowman's a producer. They they work with us, work with me, and you know we all kind of organize a strategy for for how to break this thing down. And um, so, so many different avenues, marketing, uh, social media, email. There's a, there's a lot of things uh, to do to, to launch something like this. Uh, but I'm looking forward to the end of the Kickstarter because I'll be able to do what I do really well, which is, I at least I think I do uh, to write. So uh, that's, that's kind of the gold at the end of the rainbow here. Well, it's it's an admirable goal, and, and I think quite reachable. And I would I would uh, I would uh, echo your uh, assessment and say you you are one heck of a writer. And when I saw your name attached to this, you know, as I said, I I love that movie, but I've always been drawn to that character. And Edgar Rice Burroughs, I love his first Tarzan novel. It's actually the only one I've read. I've never read the John Carter series, but after this conversation. Uh, I can promise you, I will be heading to my local library and picking it up, as well as, you know, backing this incredible Kickstarter. Uh, Michael, uh, can you tell us again where uh, everybody can find this incredible new thing? Yeah, so it's at uh, you go to johncarterrises.com, uh, just johncarterrises.com, and spell John and Carter the, the normal way, right? Uh, and then. Um, Go to Kickstarter and type in John Carter Audio or John Carter the Audio Series, and you will find it. You will find it right there. So, uh, yeah, and in and, and the the connection between Star Wars and John Carter is is uh, I when I was reading John Carter, I was amazed at how much Lucas was inspired by this series because you could you see it in the page, right? Words. I won't ruin it, uh, but the words pop out that appear in the Star Wars trilogy. And you realize, oh, wow, it's not just Dune, it's John Carter. And probably, you know, Isaac Asimov's foundation and also, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, the Lensman trilogy. But, um, uh, Lensman, Lensman series. But yeah, you can see where Lucas drew a lot of his his ideas for how to, how to create his, his science fiction saga. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to notice those little um, inspirations in the text because they're all over. And, it, and it's, it, it's got that serialized nature that was something that George loved. And, you know, of course we, everyone talks about the flash Gordon connection, but the John Carter connection is really ripe. And I had thought of that when I watched, when I first watched that film, uh, years ago, but yeah, that's, and that's actually one of the reasons why we thought this would just be a great conversation to have on coffee with Kenobi because clearly George was a fan too. Yeah, I think he uh, definitely was a fan, <laughs> at least when he was, you know, 30 years old. Yes. Writing the fourth draft of, uh, the star Wars, uh, mm -hmm. definitely, uh, yeah, definitely was a fan at the time. So, uh but it's, you know, and what he did was kind of elevate it uh, into cinema and and make something both that echoed the past and then also spoke to the future and still speaking to generations today. You know, it's the genius of George Lucas. Absolutely. So again, everyone, John Carter of Mars, the audio series with the fifth edition RPG and a Willa plush option. This audio drama stars Sean Patrick Flannery, Tim Russ and Bruce Box Lightner, uh, there are options for CDs, books, maps, prints. I mean, this, they have spared uh, no expense to bring you these inc this incredible, incredible thing. So be sure to back it and support this. Get some great content. And Michael, thank you again, my friend. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm frankly, I'm a little embarrassed that I haven't had you on since then, but I'm, but I'm so delighted and thrilled to have you back on the show. Best of luck. And I can't wait to see what you have in the future as well. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. 
This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here.